Pull that uh, over here. Again, this board. All right, so there are three general approaches to game theory that I wanted to go over. <coughs> uh, and I'll go through them one by one. If I tell you what they are before I show you the example of them, then they're not really like, it kind of spoils the game. Mm -hmm. So here's the first first game theory problem. From a problem that I, or yeah, first problem. It's from a problem I wrote from Wisconsin, each, or this contest actually, but like an earlier version of this contest, for the computer programming challenge. And here's the problem. You have a bunch of Tic Tacs. It's called Tic Tac Toe. You guys got a bunch of Tic Tacs. Right. So maybe what your Tic Tac grid looks like, these are all Tic Tacs. Basically you've got a four by five grid. Uh, initially it starts all full of Tic Tacs, so one Tic Tac in each space. Sure. So then what you can do is, okay, so there's a certain rule that's required, and the rule is that at any time, if you have some tic tac, <coughs> then the space below it has to have a tic tac, and the space to its right also has to have a tic tac, except okay. for like these bottom ones, of course. So, for example, let's say you want to delete some tic tacs, so you can delete those two, and that's fine, but you can't delete this tic tac because you got something above it. Yeah, cool. you've got like this rectangular kind of property to it. Yeah, so so it's gonna look like something like this maybe. Like uh mm, like okay. yeah. <coughs> um so that's kind of the rule. And then yeah, on a turn, you've got two players, Alice and Bob, as usual, game theory. Mm. Uh on a turn, a player can take some number of tic tacs from some row. You have to take at least one. Mm. And the player who takes this tic tac is always going to be the last tic that gets taken. Okay, yeah, so pretty min like. Yeah, yeah, pretty min like. Okay. So, any observations? Let's say we just have one row of tic tacs. Then, what is a good strategy? Uh, so, they can take any quantity, right? Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, I think the classic in them is like you want to force your opponent to have to take. Uh, the rest of the things. So well, no, you want to take all of them. You want oh, to take wait, the last you, one. You want to finish them. All. Yeah, yeah. The goal wait, is you not just take all of them. Though. You want to take all of them. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. You take all of them, then you win. That's a winning state. Okay. So what if you have just one, one column of two of them? Then mm. Then you don't really have a choice, right? Like you have to take this top one. That's your only legal move. Okay. Yeah. The the moves are uh, only taking rows. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so you have to take this one. Then your opponent takes this one and wins. Mm. So there's a losing state. There's a losing state. What if you have three in a row? Mm. Well, you're forced to just take the top one, and then they take the next one, and then you take the next one, so it's a winning state. Yep. It's going to be a winning state. So it's pretty easy to extrapolate. Mm -hmm. We have some stack. Uh, if we have an odd number, you're going to win. If you need an even number, you're going to lose. If you have some row, no matter how many you have, you're going to win. Mm. What if you have a 2 by 2 Let's see. So, I guess uh, you would want to take only one thing from the top row, and then that brings it to, like, they have to take the next one. Uh, well, let's say they take this one. Oh, right, they can take them there, too. Yeah. Um, and you end up losing. Mm. So your only other move in the beginning was taking these two, right. they take whole row moves. Yeah. So it okay. turns out this is actually a losing state. Mm -hmm. All right. So would you like some interesting strategy? What if it's uh what if it's like a two by four? I'm gonna claim that if I play second, I can win. So in other words, you're gonna lose. So it's just always based on the height then? Well, maybe, but why Why is this a losing state? Uh, let's see, so, well, I mean, it's a losing state because you can just go through and see that all of them lead to failure. But sure, sure. <laughs> maybe let's come up with a better example. Like, let's say I'm playing first. If I do this, what move do you want to make that makes it a winning state? Mm. Let's see, so, as a hint, this is a losing state. Mm. And you want it to be my turn when I'm losing. 
Let's see, you can take the two on the left. Yeah. Yeah, those two. Alright, so now, what if I do this? Uh, then I will take the one on the left. Then you wind up winning. You take that, that, and then you take that. Yeah. Alright, so what if we had seven on each row? And I take the first two. Or first three, yeah. That one. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I think I take the three on the left. Yeah. And then that reduces it to two cases of. Well, it reduces it to the sub problem we already did. Yeah. yeah. Um, in general, <coughs> what you can always do, if I take some number on the top, because that's my only choice. You can keep it so that it's just two rows of like the same number. You can keep it to this problem <coughs> by just taking right what's right below me. Okay. Oh. Right? So for any number of two rows where they're both the same, you can always do that. Okay. What if you have three rows? You got three rows. Then what? Mm. So you know x by 2, like question mark by 2, is going to be a losing. Mm. Wait, first one is rows. So 2 by question mark. You know this is going to be a losing state. Right. And 1 by anything is a winning state. Um, let's see. So we want to reduce it to that. So if I'm starting, I guess I just take the whole um, well, upper upper. Upper. Yeah, so if you do that, and then, then it's a 2 by n, now yeah. I'm losing. So after you do this, you can play symmetrically against me. Cool. So, yeah, so there's that. Alright, what if we have uh, like a 5 by 3? Then what do you do? Uh, let's see. So, well, I guess I'm trying to skip a step. What if we do a 4 by 3? Uh, I'm going to say it's probably a losing state. Uh, so if I do these two, what would you do? Um, let's see. I, well, if I take the top one there, then it brings it to a winning state for you. That's true. Um, so I don't want to do that. Uh, if I take, like, Let me let me draw this in a slightly different way. Hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're Rob and I'm Bert. Okay. So let's change it. I'm Rob. You're Bert. All right. As Rob, I feel very preferential toward taking some red pieces. Okay. In fact, as Bob, you want to take all the blue pieces for yourself. Hmm. If you can take all the blue pieces, you'll take this piece and you'll win. All so right. how do you make it so that I can't take any blue pieces? Mm. Okay, so then I'd immediately want to take those two on the top one. Yeah. Hmm. And now if I take this one, I take the one right there. I take the one below. So now <coughs> whatever I do, you can copy that move right below it. So you can just play symmetrically, and you can always win. Okay. So that's the first the first trick. Is symmetry. You can play symmetrically. So let's do another game where there's uh, some degree of symmetry. Uh, this is actually on Hacker Rank. It's called Tron. So the little or the, the game that they present is a little bit less exciting than what I'm going to show you. But it's uh, still a really interesting case of symmetry. Um, and here's how it works. So you're given some grit. Uh, have you seen the movie Tron? Uh, you're on like light bikes and you, you've got like this trail of blue light. Or, like, I blue know blue. a lot of the themes, but uh, it's on my to watch list. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. It's kind of old, but yeah. I thought it was good. So you've got some grit. Like that. It's 
And then you have two players, red and blue. The red one starts here, and then the blue one starts here. And then red goes first, and when you're red, you can move over to any space you want. If you can move like that, so that would be two turns. So like, red goes, then blue goes, then red goes up, then maybe blue goes down, then maybe red goes over, blue goes right. What was their objective? To like close off as many as I can or something? Uh, so maybe like go like that. And now at this point, blue has no option but to go this way, this way, or this way. He would crash in any three of them. Like in any of the options, he would crash. Okay, so they're like drawing walls. They're basically drawing walls, yeah, uh, from okay. like where they are. So like in the movie, you're riding a bike, and there's like this trail behind you. Mm. And if you hit somebody else's trail, you die. Or if you hit your own trail, you die too. Oh. So like you have to like watch out for the, the walls that come on your bike. That's like how, how the theme works. Makes sense. So yeah, so you're going to like traverse some the grid in some way, and you want to not die. Sure. Sure. So the question is, how do you do that? Well, I guess we should start the same way as we did the other one with like a smaller board. All right, that's a good idea. Um, let's start with a three by three. Actually. Yeah, no, let's start with a uh, four by four. All right. All right, so let's say red starts, or blue starts here, red starts here. So now I flipped them. So I guess your strategy is just to mirror everything. Yeah, I, I think everything's going to reduce to death if you copy my moves, because I don't think I can actually close anything off uh, with the way that it goes one turn at a time. Like you'll never be able to get to my side. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. So yeah. So if it's even by even, then uh, we're in trouble. Mm. What if it's odd by odd? Yeah, let's give that a shot. Uh, let's do three by three. How do you draw three by three? It's also not very square. That is not the case. Yeah. Ah. So I'm pretty sure it's nine by nine in the original. That way you can sort of middle. Uh, let's see. So you go forward, and now you can't copy it. just always going to be a winning state for red if it's odd. Why would that be? Because red can move first and therefore you can get to the middle first and uh, destroy the symmetry of the board. It's my hypothesis. Right. So I'm going to go like that and then get to the middle here. 
this. Uh, yeah, okay. So then that would be easy. Yeah, because right. so like, if I get to the middle, then you have less board space than I do, and therefore you're going to crash into something first. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. Uh, here's like a slightly different strategy that you know, might be easy to, easier to prove. Mm. Um, so if you're red, marker. Mm -hmm. let's say you're red, if you go forward here, All right. now this is the equivalent of me being red and the board being only four wide. Mm -hmm. Like you can go here, but you never need to. Okay. And now it's my turn, which means you're player two. Right. So we know anytime the board is even width, you can just play symmetrically and you can force a win. Mm. So like now whatever I do, right? If I go like this, you can do the same thing. And then now I have to move and I'm out of space. You're out of space too, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you might not be out of space. You might have more space, but it like, doesn't matter how many moves. Right, okay. So yeah, so that's like one winning strategy for this game. Uh, the the fun fun fact about this game is that you write an AI, your AI plays other people's AIs. Oh. But like this game is very obviously solvable. Yeah. Right. So like, I can write an AI with no effort that never loses. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So like, <laughs> kind of strange. It kind of it kind of like devolves into beat up on the people who are bad and haven't figured out the strategy. Mm. And then like whatever percentage of times you can win when you're supposed to lose, like. That's your goal. Like try and like squeeze as many wins out or as many yeah, there are no ties. So squeeze as many wins out as you possibly can from like the people that are bad. Makes uh, sense. Which is I don't know, kinda lame. More fun if it was a funny game. So they made yeah. a different game called Obstacle Tron. Because you move at the same time, you start at corners, there's like an interesting board. It looks like this, I think. Hmm. Like uh or I don't know, but something like this. I don't know exactly what it's like, but it, yeah, it's like that or something. And um, maybe it's, maybe they're just like, I see spaces here, it might be that. Yeah, I think that's what it looks like, if I remember correctly. All right. So, um, yeah, so one, like red starts here, blue starts here, and then you play and you can like do some cool stuff. Hmm. Um, and you can't copy people because you move at the same time. And then right. like, if you crash, then you tie. Okay. So, yeah, so this is a lot more fun, but, okay, so that's Tron, it's another symmetry game. We're gonna do one more game, and that game is called Cram. Have you heard of Cram? I have not. Okay, so let's go over Cram real quick. So Cram is a game that is played on an N by M board. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's only played from 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, that's right. the only time you're allowed to play it. In other words, you're only allowed to play it during prime time. Interesting. Uh, and as such, n plus m needs to be prime. Oh. <laughs> All right, that's sure. an important, important constraint of the game. So you have this grid. That's uh, an interesting Give constraint. me two numbers that sum to a prime. Uh, let's see. Uh, three and four. Three and four, okay. That's not how you draw three again. There we go, three by four grid. We're gonna take turns placing dominoes. Each domino is two by one. Okay. okay. And you can place a domino horizontally or vertically, wherever you want. Mm -hmm. um, whoever can't make a move loses. So you can go first, or do you wanna think about think about how this might be uh, solvable? Uh, I guess probably. So, yeah, what were you saying? Uh, oh yeah. Um, so probably something related to reducing the board size, um, like we've been doing in the other ones. Um, so maybe like filling up one side of the board until it brings it down to a smaller one, or something like that. Um, maybe. Uh, the thing is though, like you're not in control of what I do, mm. so it's kind of tricky. Um, I'm just going to tell you that the winner here is the person who plays the tax for this board. So okay. you can you move first, and I'll show you how I can win. Sure. Um, Maybe red. Or so stick one in the middle here. Okay. 
you can't. The winner is the person who plays first. Okay. So you just won. Two-eye mirroring work. Yeah. You flip over both this axis and this axis, and your first move is in the center. Mm -hmm. Then anything I do will be mirrorable. Center is not mirrorable. If yeah. it's even by even, there is no center. Mm -hmm. If it's even by even, but that's yeah. the case that the second person. Yeah. The second okay. person can mirror. From the yeah, that makes sense because first person is going to one out moves first. Now, what if it's odd by odd? Um, I guess take the center one every time, and then. Uh, just mirror them? Uh, you can't necessarily do that. So, oh, yeah, five yeah. by five. Right? Yeah, because the dominoes are one by two. Yeah, so like, like what's the center one, for example? Yeah, I guess you go for one that's like off center, like one. Yeah, but then like, if I do this, you know what you're mirroring me. That's true. So it's a bit tricky. I guess I'll try playing it out a little bit. Uh, well, I don't know how to play. Oh, I have no idea who wins it. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's just unclear in those cases, or? Well, there's some observation that we can make, which is we can only play in prime time. <laughs> so this happens to be five by five. So it's not a legal board, because mm. five plus five is 10, which isn't prime. So we have we have it solved for this is odd by even. And even by even is pretty clear second player wins, so we also know even by even. This is obviously the same as even by odd. Oh I guess. So what about odd by odd? Hmm. Here's your hint. This is actually is that possible. No one knows that it exists. Okay. Because like um I don't think we're going to get an odd by odd case because if we had odd plus odd, we would get an even, which is prime. Yeah, which is two. Yeah. And then the one by one case, uh, it's pretty obvious that first player loses. Yeah. Can't be. Yeah, so that's that game. That is cramped. Interesting. That's pretty cool, I think. Um, all right, so that's symmetry. All right, so now let's talk about one other problem. It's like the second trick. Uh, and I won't tell you what the trick is because if I tell you, then you look for it and it gets a lot easier to solve. Alright. So say I give you some binary tree and we're going to take turns. One of us will be Alice, one will be Bob. Alice will move first. Mm -hmm. And when you move, what you're allowed to do. Well, what you, when you move, what you're allowed to do is you're allowed to remove any complete subtree. Okay. So a complete subtree might just be one node, mm. might be something that looks like this. I think uh, we have a practice problem like this at some point. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, it's not yeah, exactly the same, it? but uh, it's one about like moving files forward. On the oh, yeah, yeah. That was kind of similar. So like, for example, you could remove this subtree, that's a valid move, mm. or you could remove any of the single nodes. Those are the only other valid moves. Okay. No, not any of the single nodes. Any of these three. Can't remove these. Can't remove that node. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you remove this node and this whole subtree. This node and this mm -hmm. node and that. Mm -hmm. um, so like those are some examples of valid trees. Mm -hmm. So the number of nodes is less than or equal to five thousand. Interesting. Okay. Um, any any thoughts so far? 
Uh, I guess let's try some small trees. So, um, All right. I guess uh, what's the uh, what's the winning state if uh, if you take oh, the you last one or you don't, don't, take, don't take, the take the last one? You want if this area is when you want the other person to win. Okay, you so uh, single node is always a win. That's like a sure base is. state. Yeah, um, and then. Wait, can you not? Why Why would it not always just be a win if you can take all the subtrees? Because, um, like, what do you mean? Like, you can't take this subtree, for example, because it's not complete. Oh, okay, it has to be complete. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, uh, so any complete ones uh, are just automatically a win. Yeah. Um, I guess this is a good one to start with. So, yeah, there's a really good case. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Let's see. So if I take this whole subtree, then we, uh, then the next person has to take this one because it's the only complete one, and then I take this one, then I would win. Yeah. Um, if I took, uh, if I took this one instead, um, they could take either this one or one of these, which are symmetric. So I guess. Um, let's say they take that, so take this, and then they take this, um, not do that, they take that, and then not do that, and I went in that case too. Um, hmm. So what if they took this node instead? Um, yeah, if they took that node instead, well, in that case we kind of reduce it to the other problem that we had where I took this one and then we took that one. Okay, so then you win as well? Yeah. So you kind of win no matter what they do. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah, is that always true? Um, probably not. <laughs> So what if you count how many nodes there are after each step? Hmm. Because you win when there are zero nodes, right? Yeah. So what if you count how many there are after each step? Sure. So initially there are five nodes. Yeah, I guess we could think of it like constructively instead. So like. Hmm. So after, let's say you take the first. Yeah. Step, then how many nodes are there? Uh, we're left with two. Two. Yeah. Um, then I would have to take this one, so then there'd be one. And then you take that one, there'd be zero. Okay. Uh, uh, the other option is there could be five nodes. I could take one, then be four, three, two, one, zero. Yeah. You can kind of have like a linked list. Uh, is there anything significant about these rows? Are they even? They are all even. So every time you move, you leave an even number of things for me. Hmm. If you leave zero for me, it's a loop. Is there ever a case where I can force you not to leave an even number for me? Uh, like if I'm in an even, can I ever leave an even number for you? Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Why not? Uh, because each subtree is going to have, um, to the n minus one, um, items, which has to be odd. Yep. Yeah. So every time you take a complete subtree, take an odd number, mm. it doesn't really matter what that number is, but it matters that the parity changes. Mm. Yep. And you can never go negative, so parity is going to change to a different time. Yeah. So all you have to do is count how many of are. Yeah, and you have to take exactly, like, some number of this every time you can't take just zero. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So the second thing is find some invariant. Hmm. The problem is that is incredibly difficult to do. Like it's easy to say, but yeah. finding out what that invariant is is just really unhelpful. <laughs> yeah. That's so kind of very problem. Yeah. So it's like that's not really super helpful advice. So I'm not gonna go into any more problems that that's like the thing for, because it's just like unhelpful. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can tell you, yeah, just like solve the problem. But yeah. like yeah. Alright, so the third thing is reduce it to nim. This is the third and final thing. Alright. So nim is incredibly helpful. And we're gonna go back to the pile game. Mm -hmm. 
here's the pile game. Uh, we'll do 4x4 four four again. Hmm. But we're going to remove the constraint that you have to take from like arbitrary piles. Okay. Right, we're we're removing the constraint of it having to look like like a staircase sort of thing. Okay, so you can just take anything. So you just take whatever you want. All right. So in that case, it doesn't actually matter what the board layout looks like. It's just the number of bytes over there. You have to only take things in the same row, though. Oh, like okay. you can't take like those things, right? You can only take so like if it's my first move, I can take those three. Okay. All right. Right. So now I use your move, for example. Um. Now, now actually, I, won't, I won't take these three because that's what we did last time. Uh, one thing. I do want to ask is yes. uh, if I take this, right? Uh, I do that. You have to take from like the top of the row. You have to take, you have from, to take the from, from like the left side. Oh, okay. Yeah, that wasn't clear at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have to take like some prefix of some row. Okay. All right. Gotcha. And so really, we're just maintaining how many things are in each row. Yeah. So it's like four. four yeah. yeah. So like, if you take these three, then we're just reducing this pile to one. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what I did. Yep, that's how I do it. I think that was just nim with multiple times. It is, yeah. Yeah. Um, I may have remembered the strategy for that. Uh, I'm going to try to reduce this one more. Alright. So then what I'll do is I will reduce this one to three. No, no, no. I'll reduce this one to three. Okay. Um, let's see, I will take two from this one. Okay. Like this. Uh, bring this to one. So take the field one. It's an odd move. Um, By reducing this to an odd. Well, you're reducing it to an odd before. Um, so it's not that it's an odd that matters. Yeah, it's um, it's that I didn't change something from an even to an odd is uh, kind of different, I guess. So here, can I see your marker? Yeah. So what if we what if we did this again? So basically, the point I'm trying to make uh -huh. is that I totally wasn't paying attention to the, the different column. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Great. So that's fine. So let's say, can I see black? Yeah. So if I take these. I'm not blocking the camera. Yeah. Uh, let's say I take these. All right. Now, in the old game, me taking these corresponded to you taking these. Mm. So you could copy what I do. But now, what if I take these two? 
well, now these were the two you were supposed to take. Yeah. So you can't stop me from only taking. Yeah, the there's no variant uh, anymore. In the but the you can still play symmetrically. Hmm. So like these two rows are like symmetric. So yeah. now copy me, you could take these two. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So um, we can like group these two rows together and group these two rows together. Yeah. And now you can always copy. Me. Yeah, we just have uh, kind of an odd issue. <laughs> Of uh, odd rows. Well, if we have odd rows, the first person wants there to be an even number of rows, and then they want to move second. So you have odd rows, the first person takes this, and then the first person moves. Okay. Right? So it's really the same as before. Sure. Like removing this constraint on what we can play doesn't actually change anything. Yeah, it just kind of divides the board. Uh, yeah, and it also like met, lets me take some of your pieces, and you can take some of mine, but it doesn't really change stuff. Mm. So this is NIM rotated by 90 degrees. Uh, yep, yeah. Oh. yeah. So usually in NIM, like how things are written is you've got piles of stones. Right. And then on a given turn, you can take some number of stones from some pile. Hmm. Um, you have to take at least one stone, and you can't take from different piles, but, but as many as you want from one pile. Right. And then the winner starts to take the last stone, so the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in this one, we started with stones that were all the same pile, which was like some important constraint. But in this, they don't necessarily have to be the same. Mm. So what we can do is uh, we can like turn it into this sort of thing, and we can notice that just like for the regular version. Hi. Oh, welcome. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Okay. Stop there. So there's that, and then. Yeah, yeah. The top two folder copies are yours, and then the bottom copy I need signed. Which copy? This one here? Yeah. Alright, cool. And then I'll be back with the rest. Sounds good. Man, that's a lot. How much did that cost? I'll pitch in so <laughs> now you're good. I mean like if it's a decent amount of money, I can at least throw in like you're, you're fine, you're fine. Thank you though. Sort of as well. On the bright side, we'll have plenty of pizza to eat during contests. We will have plenty. I'm sure Gav will have plenty too. Yeah. Um, okay. So, that, she put it like right in front of the camera. Though. Yeah, she did. It's a little annoying. Let's put it all this over. stones in a pile, we can take all the stones in that pile. Yeah. If we have two piles with the same number of stones, you can play symmetrically and win. Mm. Right. So if I take these two, you take these two. If I take this one, you take that one. You take the last one. Mm -hmm. Now is there any point to uh, not doing either take an entire row or take all but one? That is an interesting question. So. I have a break case, which is the most interesting small case there is. Oh. Three, one, two. Alright. So usually it seems that like the only time that you have well let's draw out some losing states here. Okay. So we know that like just one, one pile of one yeah. is gonna be a winning state. We know that one pile of two is gonna be a winning state. In general, one pile of X is gonna be a winning state. Yeah. Oh man, even more? Even more. Oh, and wow. and yeah. you guys ordered vegan barbecue pizzas. Yeah. They accidentally made them large. Oh, oh alright. Well, so <laughs> awesome. Right? Alright. Let me try to set them up. No, 
was good. Uh, would you mind like not putting them right in front of the camera though? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm all fine. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and then I signed it, so it should be awesome. Like thank that. you. Um. Yeah. So the only thing I'm saying is we got two files. Yeah. So okay. Now let's say we have like a one by one. It's gonna be a loss. Uh, two by two. It's gonna be a loss. Like symmetric. General and x by x. It's gonna be a loss. Right. And then. What about a one by three? Uh. I'm gonna say that's a win because you can easily reduce that to a one by one and then you can actually lose on your turn. Exactly, yeah. And then an x by y in general is a win. Is a win because you can make the other one an x. Okay. But where these aren't equal. Yeah. Cool. So now we have a lot of this handled. Um so what's happening? But it, 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 yeah, I guess we do a third file. So what if we have like a 1 by 7 by 7? Hmm. Uh, well, we know that a 7 by 7 is a loss, right? Yeah. We take the 1. So really this is going to be a 7 by 7 by 7. By seven. Uh, well, that's also a win because we can just take this whole pile and then pull some good. Exactly. This is a win too. Yeah. So. Uh, Make x and y not equal, so we've got like one. Yeah. Okay. So now it's a lot harder to evaluate. So let's like look at this one case by case. So I'm gonna like, in general, it looks like you only have like things that cancel each other out and become losses if you have two numbers that are the same. But this is kind of an interesting case. So um, if I take this one, then you can take this one, and now we have a two by two. We know that's a loss. Hmm. If I take two of these, then you can take these two, and one by one, that's a loss for me. If I take all three of these, you can take this one, that's a one by one, no, that's also a loss for me. Right. Alright, so I can't take this one, because then I'll lose. Right. Okay. Let's say I take this one. Well, then you can take this, it's two, two, loss for me. So the two, if I take both of them, then you can make a one, one. If I take just one of them, then you can make it one, one as well. Hmm. Alright, so now what if I take from the well, that wasn't easy to do. If you take from the one, then you make it two. Oh, yeah, that's Yeah, thank, thank you, you, too. So, really, whatever I do, I'm going to wind up losing. Interesting. So, interesting is this one is a loss. Even though, just from the numbers, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it would be like. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could also think of it as, like, uh, you know, if we got rid of this one, it reduces to x by y. Well, I guess you'd have to exhaustively check. Unless yeah. there's some fun property of them. Uh, which I there think happens to be. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the fun property. So yeah. it turns out that if we write these numbers in binary, mm. we get the numbers 1, 1, like vaguely 0, ones. 1, and 1, 0. Mm. Now we're going to take the XOR of all of these numbers. Mm. And that happens to give us, I'll write it out so it's more clear, there are an even number of ones in this row, yeah. so zero. Even number of ones in this row, so it's a zero. Mm. It gives us zero. And in NIM, zero means it's a losing state. Okay. So I kind of just pulled this out of thin air. Yeah. Where did binary come from and where does XOR come from? Oh, uh, well, I feel like this is very hard to prove. Uh, it is a bit tricky to prove, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Uh, one thing to notice is this happens to hold for like all of these things. So mm. one has an XOR that isn't zero. Two also has an x order that isn't zero. Really, anything by itself is just itself, which isn't zero. Mm -hmm. Right? I guess, technically, a pile of zero is a loss. Because if it's your turn, there's nothing there, you can't move, you lose. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So now, okay, what if we have two numbers that are the same? Mm -hmm. Well, any number x order with itself, well, you're going to have an even number of ones in every column, whether it's a zero or a one. Yeah, and it'll definitely cancel out. So then it'll cancel out, you'll have a loss. Mm -hmm. If you have two numbers that are different, well, in order for them to be different, there has to be some position in their binary representation that they're different. Mm -hmm. And in that position, you'll have a 1 in the XOR. Right. So, so it's not going to be zero, zero, so it's going to be a win. Exactly. Yeah. And we just prove for 1, 2, 3, it works nicely. Yeah. 
So this is like really just all the cases, and conveniently it matches what we've what we've done by paper. Okay, sure. So okay, so why does it work? Well, there are two things I need to show. The first thing is that if you're at a state where the XOR is zero, you can't reach a state where the XOR is also zero. So if the XOR is currently zero, any move you make will make the XOR not zero. So if you're at a losing state, whatever you do, your opponent's still gonna win. I guess that's because of like a symmetry sort of thing. Yeah, I'll show that. I'll show that. But like that's like the first thing I'm gonna show. Hmm. The second thing I'm gonna show is if you're at any winning state, you can reach a losing state. Okay. So basically if I'm gonna lose, no matter what I do will make me win. And second, if you're gonna win, you can do something that will make you lose. Right. Those are like the two sides of the argument. And if sure. I can always or if I can't do anything to win, and you can always make me lose, mm -hmm. then like we've shown that like I really have a losing state, you really have a losing state. Mm -hmm. okay. right. So the first thing is, let's say we have x, where x is not equal to zero, mm -hmm. and this is our xor. So we have some number, some things that don't xor to zero, and we want them to xor to zero by decreasing one of them. Mm -hmm. So let's say these are our numbers. So if we take the XOR, then we get 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So what we're going to do is we know that there's some number, since this is a 1, we know there's some number that has this bit on. Mm. There always has to be. Right. So we're going to find that number, mm. and we're going to make this a 0. All right. And when we do that, we can now make these bits whatever we want and still decrease them. So like if you have like a million, right? If you have a six-digit number, if you make it a five-digit number, it's definitely going to like get smaller, right? So if we decrease this, these can all like we can make these all once if we want to. It'll the number will still get smaller because we the highest bit we decrease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we'll just make these. We'll flip all of the bits we need to in order to get this to zero. Okay. So we'll make this a one, and this is zero because we need to flip this bit and this bit. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we get something that will xor to zero. Yeah, makes so, sense. so it's always possible to reach zero. Yes. All right. So now let's look at this other argument. So this thing happens to xor to zero. Now we're going to say if you decrease anything, because you have to take from some pile, so you're going to have to decrease something. If you decrease something, it's not going to xor. Or yeah, it's going to xor to like some positive number. Mm. So basically, if you decrease a number, you're going to have to change its representation in binary. Yeah. If you change its representation, there's going to be some bit that's going to change. Yeah. So let's if we say, change let's say the this highest bit. Then uh, we can't ever. Well, uh, like keep like keep some going. some bit's gonna have to change, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's say this bit changes. So it was a zero, now it's a one. Maybe it'll be the other way around. Doesn't really matter. Sure. We know this used to have an even number of ones because it had a zero here. These are all zeros. So this used to be a zero, but now we've changed a bit, which means that'll change this to a one. So now we have something that's a zero. So basically, like, if you have an even number of ones in every row, and you change one of the numbers, you're going to have to change the ones in that row. And you can only change one row because you only take from one pile. Mm -hmm. So now that row, like, since you change one of the numbers, you change the answer. Okay. So like, anytime you change something, you're going to change this answer. So, yeah. So, so you, can't change this. you can't hit another losing state from a losing state. Okay. So that's how it works. All right, so we've got a couple minutes before we eat pizza. So, let yeah, me what time are we expecting to finish? Uh, we have to be done by 12:30, but like practice doesn't start till noon or till one. Okay, there's no noon. Uh, so yeah, so we're fine. So okay, so let's look at a couple couple of things that I wrote down. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just do just do quick ones. So the first one is called. Oh, I just forgot. Nor. Norcott's game. Norcott's game looks like this. You have a bunch of uh, like rows. Basically a chessboard is a good way of describing it. Okay. And uh, I mean, yeah. So I have some rook and you have some rook. It's not really a rook. 
bi-directional pawn, maybe. Okay, so they can only move one, but they can go in a uh, Well, no, kind of like a unidirectional rook. <laughs> More like, like they can move as many as they want, Okay. but they can't move left and right. So they have like that. Now, on a given turn, what you can do, you can do red. Uh, and you can go first, too. Well, I'll go first. That's an example. So what I can do is I can take my rook, and I have to move it at least one space. But I can move it up or down as many spaces that I like, but I can't have to. OK. So maybe I want to move down, so I'll move to here. All right. Not here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess, wait, what are, what's the aim of this? Oh, sorry. The goal is to make it so the opponent can't move. So okay. if you track all of my pieces against the wall, then I won't be able to move. Okay, so I guess I'll move here. All right, cool. So you've tracked one of my pieces. That's pretty good. Uh, it seems plausible that I might want to track this piece, too. Yours. Mm. Now you're trapped. Uh, well, I'll move this one down. Here. Ah, that's a little bit annoying. All right, uh, this game's getting a little scary, so I'm gonna add some more space back to the game. All right. Uh, I guess these are resembling your files or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, this is the uh, the reduce everything to nim trick. Yeah, this is. Um, let's see. I'll try moving over to the right. Oh, you can't move right. Oh, I can only up and down. Yeah. Oh, oh. Otherwise, the game would take a while then. Yeah. So you're, you're here going with this one. Yeah. Um. Really old, isn't it? Oh, well, I guess his Wikipedia doesn't have a death. 
Oh, it's just, probably still there. Yeah, the, the easy way to check is uh, if the first sentence of the article contains it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So I think he's still there. Okay, so he's a great guy, great guy. Um, so he came up with a game. So how it works is you have some ground layer, and then this is, uh, we're going to do black Hackenbush. So black Hackenbush, all the lines are black. There's also red, blue Hackenbush, where the lines are like red, blue, and then the red person can only take red lines, blue person can only take blue lines. Okay. But black per like black hack and bush, everyone can take any color lines, or like anyone can take all the lines that they want. So maybe you have something that looks like this. Hmm. So maybe that's the game. Sure. And on a given turn, what we can do is we can like hack part of the bush down. Mm. So we can maybe like let's say it's my turn, I want to delete this line. I can do that. I'll delete this, like I'll cut it, mm -hmm. and then all of this branch falls to the floor. Okay. Now maybe it's your turn, you cut this one, you just cut the entire bush down. So now, all right. you cut the last thing, I can't move, so I lose. Uh, I guess we'll have to have multiple bushes for this to be interesting. Exactly. Yeah. So, if we have just one bush, it's kind of lame. Mm. So it's already pretty nim looking, except we've got this uh, sort of constraint on some of the things we can take. Yeah. yeah. And interestingly, mm -hmm. what we can do is we can say, these are connected to the ground, right? Mm -hmm. But one way of looking at it is we can say, all right, well, sure, the ground is one thing, but really, we can make the ground just some node. This is the ground node. OK. And now everything's connected to the ground ground, just a node. Yeah. Right? So now, if we root the tree at the ground, mm. now we've got a rooted tree, Sure. and you can delete any subtree on a turn. Mm. Okay, so we're at that problem from before. Except you can't delete the ground. That's okay. Because like, right. like you can't, right? Otherwise that'd be stupid. Yeah. So we can delete edges. And yeah. 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 Okay. Um, exactly, yeah. Or delete, yeah, I guess we delete edges, right? Yeah. You delete any edge and it's like some yeah, and our goal is to just reduce it to only the ground. To only the ground. Yeah. yeah. So, one thing you'll notice is, let's say we have something that looks like this. This is pretty much equivalent to having an impile of size 3, size 1, and size 2. It is. Yeah. So that's that's kind of nice. So right. we can treat this node mm. as well. Like let's say the value of this node is like pretty much one, right? I guess because like this is if you like mm. ground it here, then this node has like it's like the root of some tree. Yeah. But the tree is just a pile of one stone. Right. So this is just one. This is just a two. Because mm. it's just like a pile size one with one more stone on it. Yeah, okay. And this one, like this edge, really, is like, I guess it's more, these are more on the edges. This is one, this is two, this is three. Yeah. This is one, one, two. You could say either way, because, you know, it's a tree, so the whole of these was the alignment. Yeah, sure, sure. Right. Like you can assign it to the thing below. Yeah. But we don't want to assign this multiple times. But anyway, okay. So now this, well, we have a pile size three, one, and two. So we know this, like, is kind of an edge size zero. Hmm. All right, so that's All right. fine. So but we've got that special case of like the linked list children. Uh, yeah. So now here's what I'm going to do. What if we have something like this? Hmm. Now, what's the value of this edge? I guess they probably the name result of those. What do you mean? So like uh pick the X or these. Well that's that was this one. Mm -hmm. So this is the XOR of what? So alright, I'll just give you the answer. So like this thing has like an in result of zero kind of? Yeah. This one would have an in result of one. Ah uh, yeah. Because this pile cancels out to be zero. So it's the same as like we just deleted this entire tree. Mm. 
and now we can like add one more edge to it. Okay. So what you can do is you can do like sort of a DFS sort of thing, where you can see, okay, what are the nim of all of my subtrees? Mm. Now you can turn me into that, and now we can like do stuff with that. So basically, okay. if we have some node that looks like this, this subtree from here downward is always equal to something that looks like this. Like they're the same from the rest of the tree's perspective. Yeah, that makes sense because the well, the end result is the same. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we can turn this whole thing, like turn this whole subtree, into just one branch, one bamboo stick, mm. as they call it. Okay. And then from there on, we can solve the tree crisply. Yeah. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So that's that. Pretty cool. Um, that's the game theory stuff. Uh, I have some more, but like, obviously we're kind of out of time. Yeah. So, hope you enjoyed, Bill. Hope everyone else who's watching at home enjoyed. I hope I didn't block the camera too much uh, during that. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll see. We'll see. Should be fine. Yeah. Goodbye.